really delighted that all of you uh, could come out tonight and share this very special occasion for a very special man. Well, we uh, uh, we love Ken because uh, he has made a uh, long, joyous, a strenuous, and, a, and an always exceptional journey uh, through life in the pursuit of justice. Uh, all of us have touched uh, Ken, and Ken has touched us in, in some way during our, our lives. Uh, but the, the animal himself remains virtually impossible to describe. He's been through so many phases and changes and, uh, and morphs uh, uh, during his life that, uh, that we all know uh, a, a different person depending on, on the time we met him. But yet it's the same person. The second analogy is a train journey, one that has gone on for nearly 100 years. Uh, and a recollection of the scenery uh, through which it has traveled, where it has stopped, and the adventures uh, along the way. And, uh, and we start, uh, we can start with uh, Ken's birth uh, in uh, 1914, 1914 in Roslyn, uh, New York. And this is uh, where he begins, is his journey begins. He's uh, born to staunch Republican uh, parents. <laughs> now these aren't today's kinds of Republicans, these are Teddy Roosevelt Republicans of that era. And so it's a, it's a, much, a much different uh, kind of, uh, kind of animal. Uh, now, the second, yeah, he, uh, I misplaced my, I should have, I should have brought my piano along because if I had my piano, I could find my notes. He begins in Roslyn, New York. Uh, he goes to school at uh, Swarthmore, uh, Columbia, uh, advances through those schools, and goes on to get his uh, PhD at Columbia University. Uh, he teaches uh, uh, political science there at uh, Columbia and Swarthmore, at uh, Barnard. You're teaching at Barnard, right, uh, Ken? At Barnard and at Columbia. And these are the these are schools. He immediately gains a reputation as a very innovative, exciting teacher. And one of the things he does in his class is that he, he, uh, he sets up telephone interviews between his class, uh, the members of his class, and people in Washington, the uh, Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, Farley, the, uh, the kingmaker in the Democratic Party, James Farley. Uh, this is the sort of uh, exciting thing that he does. Uh, then uh, he moves on to the military and becomes a uh, wartime journalist. And he uh, travels all over Europe, and uh, then at the close of uh, World War, and, and as part of that experience, and part of his uh, witnessing, uh, he uh, later writes a book, The Bridge at Romagin, which is a very, a very famous book that was made into a, uh, a motion picture. And you're aware of that. Uh, at the end of World War II, uh, Ken is assigned to interview the, uh, the major Nazi war criminals that were uh, captured in the American zone. And so he, go, he goes to Luxembourg and interviews uh, Gehring and, and many others there. And his book is on display right now. There it is. Uh, that book is on display at the West, West Virginia Book Festival. And uh, I urge you to, to take a look at that uh, tomorrow if you're uh, able to get there. Uh, he, after the war, he moves on to the, uh, the Truman White House. Uh, in the post-war period, and, and a very colorful chapter in his life begins as an aide and speechwriter uh, to President Truman. And during this part of his train journey, uh, the analogy runs, uh, Ken goes to the back of the train very often to meet with uh, President Truman in the caboose, uh, because this is on his uh, Truman's whistle-stop tour around the country, in which he's running for President of the United States. And Ken often gets off the train and mingles with the crowds uh, at these uh, whistle-stop visits in, in various towns across America. And this is part of his democratic upbringing. Uh, he mingles with the crowd, he talks to the people, he, he, he sees the interaction between a Harry, Harry Truman and the people of America. 
and this has a profound uh, impact on our on our guest. Uh, he, uh, believe it or not, maybe, maybe some of you did not know this, uh, he did a stint as Adlai Stevenson's uh, research director in 1952. He came to Marshall University uh, in 1957, and in the very next year, at the urging of his students, he runs for Congress. Uh, here he applies much of what he has learned in prior political campaigns and from uh, Harry Truman. He goes to the people, uh, to where they live and where they work, uh, literally. He works tirelessly and hands out many copies of the Bridget Vermagen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he hands out enough books and talks to enough people that miraculously uh, he wins the election against a very, a very established uh, congressman. And he wins by 3,500 votes. Well, in his nine terms in Congress, uh, that's counted, nine terms, uh, he does a great deal, and I'm not going to uh, review that for you, just to mention mine safety and health, civil rights, uh, a champion of the environment, a champion of fair taxation, uh, author of the Government and uh, Ethics and Government Act, I believe, uh, and uh, a very noteworthy as uh, as uh, as uh, Tony will uh, verify, he marched with Martin Luther King Jr. at Selma, Alabama, the only congressman uh, to have done that. So after leaving Congress to make a, a race for governor, which we won't dwell on tonight, but, uh, he ran for the Secretary of State's office and won and served four terms. And uh, in those years, uh, when other people were uh, retiring to greener pasture, uh, Ken was a champion of uh, new causes, cleaner elections, uh, fair taxation, campaign finance reform. And uh, I, bet, uh, I bet Ken several times along the way, but I remember in 1999 uh, meeting Ken and Granny D, who were walking across the country for campaign finance reform. And uh, we walked uh, down into Cumberland, Maryland, uh, and uh, oh, was I proud. And, and, and uh, what did I do? I walked with Ken. I walked, I walked with uh, some giants. Uh, after leaving office in uh, 2000, he continued to uh, be very much involved. He worked for road safety, uh, working to uh, deal with oversized trucks on West Virginia roads that were a danger. He continued to focus public attention on mine safety and still is uh, performing in that role. And, uh, and that's, that's what he's done. Well, that's, uh, that's enough of that. And uh, that's a, quick, a very quick review of a very, uh, a very marvelous career.